OneDrive for Business is a web-based application you can use to store files of your own or files you'd like to share with other people. To get to OneDrive for Business, I like to start on office.com. Office.com is just an easy to remember address that gives you easy access to lots of apps, not just OneDrive, in Microsoft 365. This includes access to your Outlook webmail, OneDrive of course, which is where we're headed here shortly, SharePoint, and Teams. So we can get to all of those from office.com, but we can also use the app launcher from anywhere inside Microsoft 365. So throughout this course, I'm going to be using the app launcher in the upper left. Some people call that the waffle icon or the nine dot grid. When you expand that, you can choose Outlook, OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, and a whole host of other apps, including Planner and Forms, which can be embedded in experiences like SharePoint and Teams. We're going to start out going to OneDrive. Now that we're in OneDrive, you can see there's already some files and folders in this particular user's OneDrive. For this course, I'm going to be playing the role of Megan Bowen, who works at Contoso Electronics. Megan has five folders and several files. Some of those files are private to her, and some she's already shared with other people. We can see that here in the sharing column. We can also see on the left-hand side, we've got some navigation options that allow us to get away from our, our files and folders and into maybe some more business process specific options, such as picking up where we left off last by using the recent tab. Perhaps someone said they shared a file with us so we can go to shared to see what we have access to. Shared is split into shared with you and shared by you. One of my favorite features of the shared with you page here is that you can actually group the column shared by and now I can see that Adele shared three files with me, Christy shared three, Deborah shared four, Diego shared two, and you can expand those. So the next time somebody says, hey, did you see that file I sent to you? You can come here, group by shared by, and then find their name. And then hopefully you'll see it listed there. Shared by you is a great way to just kind of audit what you've shared with other people to see what others have access to that's hosted in your OneDrive. So you're responsible for all the permissions to anything you see here. And lastly, we have the recycle bin. The recycle bin is, of course, where deleted items go, and that includes files, folders, and even specific versions of a file. We'll talk about version history later in this course. From here, I can empty the recycle bin, and I can just delete one specific item to double delete it, or I can restore an item. This involves versions as well, where if you did delete a version, you could restore it from here. Items in your recycle bin stay there for 93 days before they're permanently deleted anyway. Last thing over here on the left is quick access. So this is where you can have easy access over to SharePoint document libraries. So in addition to your own private files, these are libraries that are shared with other people you work with. So for example, there's a site out there or a team called New Employee Onboarding. And when you go into documents here, this is where the files that that group shares would actually be. Let's look at one that actually has content. The Marquette project team works on product launches and R&D and different kinds of initiatives related to a, a specific product at Contoso Electronics. When I click on their name, I do see existing folders and files uh, that that group shares. So they're all in a way responsible for the permissions and all of the, the quality of the material that's found here. So we of course are gonna be focusing on my files here at the beginning of the course, but we'll get into SharePoint later in chapter two. So back on my files here, notice I've got some options across the top. I can create new files from my OneDrive. I can upload existing files, perhaps from a shared network drive or my desktop. I can sync files for offline access. And I've got an option here for automate, which uh, allows us to build workflows that based on certain actions, we can do things in or outside of our OneDrive. And then on the far right here, we can change how we view our files. So for example, if you want to sort these by modified instead of by name, you could. And something I really like is to change the list view into a compact list view so that it gets rid of all those horizontal lines and things that are a little bit tighter so you can see more on one screen. There's also a tiles view. And in the far right upper hand corner, we've got the details pane. If you click on that, it gives you general information about the activity of your OneDrive. So items you've deleted, items you've created or shared. But if you select one particular file while that's expanded, or if you select a file and then expand the details pane, you can see a preview of the file, 
manage access. So if you've already shared the file, you can change who can have access to it still. And you get specific activity for that one file. Also notice when I have one file selected, my ribbon menu options change along the top. So instead of just new, upload, and sync, now I have new, open, share, copy, and a whole bunch of other options here. We'll come back to some of these in the next lessons. In the far upper right hand corner, you'll have two icons here. One is settings and one is help. The settings wheel allows you to manage your personal OneDrive settings, but also restore your OneDrive to an earlier time. So for example, if you made a lot of changes today and then tomorrow you realize you'd like to go back to how things were before you did all that work, perhaps some mistakes were made, you can restore your OneDrive to a previous point in time. And we'll cover that last in this first chapter. And then we've also got help. So help is always going to be contextual, and you'll find this throughout Microsoft 365. So for example, when we're in OneDrive for Business and we click on help, we see help for OneDrive for Business. But when we go to SharePoint in Chapter 2 and we click on help, that's going to be SharePoint help here instead. And the last thing I want to introduce you to here, as far as navigation and uh, introducing OneDrive goes, is the search bar. And the search bar is super important, and we'll find it all throughout Microsoft 365. And it's usually in this exact same location, but something you have to pay attention to is the scope of the search. When we're in OneDrive, it defaults to all files, which means every single file across all of Microsoft 365, not just your OneDrive. To give you an example, if I were to search for finance here, notice I'm getting items that are coming from my documents, which is my OneDrive, but also from sites like new employee onboarding, retail, market project team, so really not what I'm looking for. I wanted to search my OneDrive. So if that's the case, just make sure that you drop down all files to my files. Okay, when you choose my files, now you'll only get results from your own OneDrive that include that keyword or phrase. You may have also noticed there's an option up here for a whole organization. If you choose that, it's actually gonna take you out of OneDrive and move you over into SharePoint. But the results you'll see there are from all of Microsoft 365. Let's go ahead and try it out. If I choose whole organization, notice now I'm in SharePoint, and I can see that up here next to the name of my company, and I have these search verticals that tell me different categories I can search within. By default, I'm searching absolutely everything, and I can filter by file type or last modified, but I could also change that and just look at files, or I could just look at sites or people or news, so on and so forth. So this is the search experience inside of SharePoint. But of course, we want to stay focused on OneDrive for now. Now that we've kind of been oriented to OneDrive, we're ready to get into some deeper topics and learn how to really use OneDrive for business processes. This concludes lesson one. Click continue to move on to our next lesson.